Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. couple of weeks we go to call somebody and it goes something like this okay everybody here we go let me see here got a call out to our old friend here see what happens here see if he uh, um, here we go and now it's time to play double jeopardy and the answer is Hank Williams John F. Kennedy and Jane Mansfield uh, who were three people? Seatbelts wouldn't have helped. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> A new winner. La, 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 la. Thank you. I don't know how you can be this perky this time of the morning. What time do you get what, up, Stephen what is Pearl? It? Uh, it's 10, 10 in the morning. I've been up for several hours. I usually get up at 4 or 5. Yeah. And I have my coffee, and I smoke my bowl, and I watch my TV, and I'm ready for action. Wait a minute. You smoke a bowl that early in the day? Oh, well, certainly. <laughs> That's why I'm so jolly this time of day. Oh, boy. And I already had a couple of waffles with butter and syrup. Who could, who could be grouchy this time of day? Wow. After all that fun. And I'm having fun, and I'm working. And yesterday, the dentist made my smile beautiful again, and my insurance covered it. And I had a great time with Carla Bow in Arizona. And right now, I'm watching I Love You, Alice B. Toklas, and playing with my cats. Life couldn't be better. <laughs> you sound happy. I'm very, I'm content. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I'm too smart to be happy. I know the world is shit, and I know I'm going to die sooner or later. But is right it, now, I'm very content. Isn't it funny that, you know, for all the years you spent in the San Francisco Bay Area, the place you can get uh -huh. work now is Vegas? Yeah, it's crazy. I never thought I'd live here, and I never thought I'd like living here. But uh, I do, and I'm working, and I'm seeing all my friends pass through town, and it's fun, you know. Yeah. And my, my lady was here for a couple of weeks, and, uh, and then she left yesterday, and I'm all by myself with my little cats. I'm living in a cat house. Yeah, living in a cat house. Well, it's in Nevada. Living in a cat house. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but I, it's, it's, I like it here, and it's, and it's portable to live here, and it's nice. It's affordable. Yeah. What, Thank you, Bugsy Siegel, or whoever came up with the idea. Well, wait a minute. So, like, for instance, what have you got? What are you living in? What am I living in? We got a one bedroom, and it's a nice living room. We can go bowling in. There's plenty of room in it. And uh, it, what is it? 975 a month, which is what? really oh, nice. Oh, my God. And That's I'm splitting incredible. that with my lady. And uh, when Tamayo stays here, it's even less. So, it's I got a, my own pocket space and everything. Yeah. So when's your lady coming back? She's got a mother that's sick, right? That's why. Yeah, she's yeah. She's taking care of her mom, but she came out here for a couple of weeks, which is nice. And she took care of the cats while I was in Arizona for three days a couple of weeks ago, and uh, hopefully she'll come out here next month. So you know, and uh, uh, we, we shall see. We shall see. So what? What do you do? Like you don't work every night, right? No, I don't want to work every night. No, so I stay what, home. So what, I'm in bed by eight or nine. I'm an old fart. So what? That's what, why I get up so early. What do you do in Las Vegas? Uh, what do I do anywhere? Nothing. <laughs> I just I, I I watch TV and uh, enjoy being home, play on the computer, whatever, listen to tunes, yeah. play with the cats. You know, I'm I'm busy enough. And then I work. I worked to play a couple of places last week. I'm gonna uh, I'm off this week, but next week I start working, and I'm in February starting to fill up. So I'm very happy about that. So in other words, during the day, do you go out? Do you go there other places to hang out and do things and so on, or it basically do you just stay home because the only thing in Vegas are all those casinos? Yeah, I don't. I'm not a gambler. I don't. You know, I work casinos, but I'm not going to hang out in them. And uh, but uh, what do I go out? I see friends sometimes. I have some friends with dogs, and I'm going to make a play date for next week to play with their dogs and. Uh, because, you know, you can't just have cats in your life. And uh, what do I do anyway? How do we go out during the day? I go out to shop and sometimes they take a little drive or to fill the car with gas or get it worse. That's how they say washed in Washington. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what do I do anywhere? I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not running around like I used to. It, 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 well, that's for damn sure. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I can't even skip steps when I walk upstairs. So, yeah. yeah. 
so uh, uh, do you feel, for instance, th there are a lot of things happening in this country right now. Sure, right? sure. Do you feel removed from them there? Is, 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 uh, well, if you watch the news, you're not removed from them because it's right in your face and there's all kinds of horrible shit going on. Yeah. But in my age, I'm not ready to fucking take it to the streets, you know, unless it gets really serious. And, uh, no, I'm just, I'm living my life. Let the, let the young people worry. Let them have the oil. Well, Whatever they want to do, it's well, good for well, them. As a kid who used to go out protesting and marching and doing all of that, sure. I even said back then, I have to do it because I'm young. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I, I also said when I got older, that's really something for young people. Because it takes young people, like for instance, when I went to a march in Washington, I slept on somebody's floor in in New York in Washington. I would never uh -huh. sleep on anybody's floor now. Oh God, no! I couldn't unless you know the floor was made out of nice mattresses. But yeah, uh, okay. no, man, I can't do. I can't. Exactly. I can't hitchhike anymore. I can't sleep on someone's kitchen floor anymore. No, I'm too over this shit. It's the only reason I won't go on the road anymore. You know, but, unless it's you know uh, a fun gig. But, it's just you know, God, I'm just too old to be staying in hotels every night. You would put up with circumstances today that you would not have put up with then. It, it, well, it, it, yeah, it, I put it, up with circumstances then. No, I wouldn't put up with excuse, now. Excuse, that's sure. <laughs> excuse me, that's what I meant. You put up that's with circumstances. That's what you meant. Oh, mind is going. So you need more really, chicory. Really what I say is marching and protesting and everything is the something the young people should do. Uh, and, yes, and, they should. If they see an injustice, whether whatever side you're on, they should march against it. You know, so, and you, and like you we should, did with Vietnam, it was amazing. You, you know, amazing times like that. So. You shouldn't feel but bad. But now, you know, know, let you guys let you guys figure it out. The young people. Well, you shouldn't feel bad if you're old and 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 you don't, because you did. No, you know, I mean, I did. No. So I'm I'm I have no guilt at all about saying. Hey, Me neither. You know, I, I I put my head myself in you know the way I get hit in the head with a brick or a club or a bottle or getting beaten up by all those marches I was in, and I'm glad I did it. I do it again if the same thing was happening. But right now, uh, it's just you know there's nothing wrong with marching at any age if you really believe in something. Right now, I just don't see anything really to march against. Even though I'm I'm not that happy with what's going on in Washington, and it really never was. So you yeah. know. We got another nut in office, so what? We've had nuts in office a lot many times. Well, I could see things it's, to march for, you know, but sure. but to get me out and down to the march, you know, it it takes it takes a lot of strength that you don't have when you're older. You know? Exactly. Yeah, and I could I could march a long time when I was younger. I could march like all of them down whatever Madison Avenue or whatever they did in in New York or Washington, you know. Uh I can't do that today. I can march for a while, but uh, not forever. And also, I don't know. I came to the conclusion. Oh boy, we 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 lost him. Let me call him back. Yeah, but this happened last time we were dealing with him on the phone. But we didn't have any trouble when we were doing bubbles yesterday. So yeah, we did a lot. It was of just getting sizzling, and we got cut off. The goddamn FBI. I, I, this happened. With you uh, when I'm using Skype, but it doesn't happen with Bubbles, doesn't happen with anybody else, but it happens with you. Well, what the hell? Well, well I have to, I'll do what Bubbles does and get one of those like 1975 shell type phones, clam pops, whatever he's, they call he, he has a, he has, he has his, he's got a He's got a rotary dial on his cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Nine. <You> know, <laughs> I have offered him. An old phone of mine, not an old phone. I mean, it, it's uh, it's a, what they call a 6S, and it's the biggest one they made back then. And it's really good. It's It uh, does all the stuff, you know, that a phone's supposed to do. And I said, it's yours. All you got to do is go find somebody who's going to sell you service for it, you know? Yeah. You call up AT&T and see how much it's going to cost. And he doesn't. You know, he I won't think, do it. And he's I don't, happy with what he's got, which isn't no, much. I don't, think, I, I don't think Bubbles is happy. I think Bubbles has a reputation to live up to. Yeah, you know, that's and, it, true. and if suddenly he had a new uh, uh, Apple iPhone, uh, everybody would go, "Oh, well, that's it's one little thing we can don't have to say about Bubbles anymore." You know? Yeah. But what's the one <laughs> thing? Whenever you talk about Bubbles, what's the main thing that comes up? You know? <laughs> yeah. For a guy who's unhappy, he's still trying to do his best to stay alive. He's like jog six miles a day and all that stuff. So, yeah, 
guy you think you'd want to jump off a building. Oh, no, I got to stay healthy. I got to live forever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the great paradox of bubbles. Exactly. So, you know. Yep. But he won't, he won't, he, he literally won't, uh, 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 you know, he, he doesn't go ahead and get, get it done. And I've got this phone sitting here. I I would look. I, uh, I turned it on today. <laughs> he still has a, a desktop computer. He doesn't have a sound card. He can't play videos or anything like that. He doesn't have a sound card. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have a sound card for his computer. How old is his computer? It's, 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 I don't know. It's probably got Windows sixty two. I think it's. I think it's actually a Netra Sketch connected to a typewriter connected to a blender. It's one of those old timey computers. Oh, but it's all right because he doesn't like music anyway, so he's not going to listen to music. But, <laughs> but, but, but isn't that what we love about him? You know, of course. You know, he'd the bub man. He, I, I would be disappointed if he was any other way. Uh, he's the only guy I know that when he was young, he was old. You know, exactly. He, he, exactly. Like Jimmy Durante, he was born old. He was born old. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> that should be the name of his next hit comedy album, "Born Old." You can't imagine Jimmy Durante young. No, you know, I can't yeah. imagine like a seventeen-year-old. Ha cha 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 cha! I gotta get some snatch. Ha, cha, cha, cha. <laughs> you know something? I'm a horny young teenager. It's <laughs> funny. I yeah. hope she gives me some nose later. Ha, cha, 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 cha. You and I are talking about somebody that we consider to be, you know, an, an icon in show business, and yep. yet I would imagine the people who are listening to this right now, most of them don't know who Jimmy Durante was. No idea. I probably think she's a teamster or a labor leader or something. Jimmy Durante, you been the uh, head of the AFL CIO or something? Uh, yeah, right, right. But <laughs> he was, uh, when I was a kid, he was my favorite comic. Kids loved Jimmy Durante. Oh, sure. Everybody loved him. Yeah, yeah. And you know who loved him the most? The mob. I don't know. He was the mob's comic. Oh, did they? He was the mob's comic. Oh yeah, he would play the Copacabana really? all the time. Yeah, he was the mob's comic. They loved him. I did not know that. Yeah. Well, he was one of the first guys to play Vegas. I think when Bugsy Siegel booked the first show at the Flamingo, Jimmy Durante was there, Rose Marie was there. He was one of the first guys to play there. But you know, one of the saddest things you'll ever ever see, uh, you, you had Buster Keaton again, folks. Look up Buster Keaton. <laughs> Here we go. Let's play that time machine. In fact, Buster Keaton may have been, to, for my money, he was the greatest silent comedian of them all. Oh, he's amazing. He was amazing. And he the was. The stunts he did would have killed like 20 other guys. It's insane. Uh, he broke his neck and didn't know he broke his neck. <laughs> years <laughs> the later. The man was made of rubber. Year, years later, they t took an x ray because he had some kind of fall or something. And they said, Do you know you broke your neck? <laughs> I had no yeah. idea. They said, you mean just now? He said, no, years ago. <laughs> years ago. Yeah, funny. but anyway, because he would do all his own stunts, folks, until he went to MGM, and then they figured there was too much of a liability in that, and they had other people yeah. do it, and they weren't funny. You know, he That's knew right. how to do f stunts and make them funny. But anyway, yep. uh, he, uh, he, he went to work for MGM, and... Uh, um, he had been producing all his own films and directing all of them. And then when he went to MGM, they said, oh, no, we want to use our in-house directors and blah, blah, blah. And they started controlling yeah. his career. And he started drinking because he was very unhappy. Uh -oh. And um, they started, they, they decided, uh, well, you know, he, his, his, his star has faded because he was very big in silence. And it wasn't that he didn't have a great voice for comedy. His voice was terrific. But they they had an idea that, hey, he's a silent comic. Let's uh, put him in some stuff. So they put him in musicals. That was something they put him in. There was a musical he did. And he wasn't bad in it. But, you know, that wasn't his thing. Finally, they just said, well, let's team him up with somebody. Let's make him a team. And they teamed him with Jimmy Durante. All right. And that... Didn't work at all. <laughs> it was it was <laughs> it was like oil and water were trying to mix, yeah. you know. Like Abbott, Abbott and Hardy. <laughs> Abbott and it was terrible. It was just terrible. So anyway, enough of the silent stars, folks, because you don't even know there were silent. <laughs> they don't even know there were silent movies. Okay. No, not <laughs> movies without special effects. In fact, they don't know there was black and white television. Yeah, that's right. 
You know, they used to make TVs that only got black and white long ago, kids. Actually, color was brought in originally in about the mid '50s, which was only about six years after television, eight years after television, seven years after television, kind of hit the marketplace. Um, they were going to do television in 1939, and they were going to roll it out and get sets to everybody and start transmissions and all that. And then the war broke out. So uh, there were no parts and no, none of the, so they didn't start television until like about 48, something like that. Uh -huh, that's right, 48, 49. It was the yeah, same. It's probably yeah, yeah. known. Yeah. So it was, so by 53, they had color. Uh, but it wasn't until I think 63 that color became cheap enough for everybody. And they started coming yeah. out with the cheaper sets and everything, and and all the and all the networks like NBC said, I'm, "We're going to be all color," and then CBS said, "We'll be all color," and then ABC yeah. said the same thing, and so finally, uh, the color came into its own in about sixty three, sixty four. Yep, yeah. remember the NBC Peacock, and then yeah, back then everyone had like one or two neighbors on the block that had a color TV, and you became friends with them quickly. But do you remember <laughs> how in the early days? You remember how small those screens were? Oh, sure. Yeah, you yeah. had like the TV would be the size of like ten refrigerators, and the screen was like the size of a porthole. It was like a ten-inch screen or something like this, but the size of an iPad. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but it was in color. Was you could a, finally see what color Gilligan's shirt was. It's red. Oh boy, I know now. They had. I got to tell you, you'll love this story. They were competing color systems, and because uh, uh, RCA Sarnoff, uh, who basically brought television into the world wanted to be the guy who had the color television system. They were competing uh -huh. against CBS who had a color television system. Now the CBS system, oddly enough, the picture, the color picture looked incredible. Where the uh -huh. NBC version, the RCA version, was a bunch of dots and so on on the screen. <laughs> yeah, I remember those, yeah. And, sure. and it, wasn't, it didn't have the, uh, the clarity of the CBS uh -huh. system. There was just one problem with the CBS system. It had a huge wheel that rotated in the set. Uh, uh, if you can imagine this, it would, it, it, and I don't think it made a sound. I think they had it so it was quiet, but it whirled like an incredible <laughs> speed. So uh, the best system was the CBS system. So the FCC uh -huh. okayed the CBS system, which uh -huh, like drove the whirling wheel. Sarnoff and CBS crazy. Uh, NBC crazy, so NBC started a campaign against the the wheel system by giving out reports. <laughs> ban the wheel. No, I remember the ban the wheel movement. Giving out reports that the wheel had come loose on some television sets and decapitated people. <laughs> oh my god! Which wasn't <laughs> it wasn't true, but it was enough that by I think it was 1948. Uh, the FCC reversed its decision with CBS and gave the uh, the system to RCA, who then came out with this uh. vastly inferior system. I, you know, the idea of a wheel in your television set whirling around—I don't know—I'd have to see that to believe that yeah. it didn't make noise and that it didn't decapitate people. You know, yeah, <laughs> I'd pay to see that. But that was that was the big story back in the day. You know. Yeah, well, it's like, yeah, oof, early Vic Morrow. <laughs> early Vic Morrow. <laughs> uh, kids, Vic Morrow was an actor. Uh, <laughs> oh, let them find out by themselves. Yeah, Wikipedia. Don't you? Well, go see the, his look last... It up, look go, it up in your Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, go see his last movie, The Twilight Zone, the movie. <laughs> uh, and you'll see Vic Morrow. Uh, yeah, and, go, go to YouTube and watch the accident happen. <laughs> You'll see part of Vic Morrow. There was a little accident during the making of that film, and Vic Morrow was killed. Okay, that's right. His last his last words are my hat. Hey, the kids out there are just getting an education here. Who else can we say? That's right. Listen and learn, you punch. By the way, uh, we lost. Uh, what was her name? That actress. Now I'm trying to remember. We lost an actress uh, today. Kay Ballard. Kay Ballard died. The mother's in law. Yeah. Now you see. Anybody out there know who we're talking about? Kay Ballard? No, of course Kay not. Ballard? They don't know Eve Arden, Kay Ballard, 
Richard Deacon, none of the cast of The Mothers-in-Law. Is, oh, Richard Deacon was on The Mothers-in-Law? I think he played one of the husbands. They they replaced him with someone or someone with him. Yes, folks. See, we're talking about stuff you don't understand. This is a conversation <laughs> yeah. between two old pals who, who know about this stuff. Too old for it. I remember his watching the Three Stooges in Spanish on UHF. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that I'm mourning the death of Kay Ballard, who, by the way, was 92, I so think. 90, 94, 92, 94? something like that. Born in the 20s. Yeah. Old timey. Uh, 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 she died, and uh, 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 but she was she was not one of my favorites. But I knew she existed because she was always there, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, uh, but it's kind of it's kind of kind of uh, so. With Kate Ballard, goodbye, and everybody can go. Who the fuck yep. is Kate Ballard? Uh, well, look her up, or don't look her up. What do I care? You know the, these people. It, do you ever come up against these people and you go, they're still alive? Oh, yeah. So people like, I remember when Frank Capra died. I thought he died in the 40s. <laughs> he died in like the 90s or something. Yeah. Uh, well, the, here, here, you know, uh, do you know who's still alive? I looked this up because I went, God, I, I, I remember the guy and I, I, I did he uh, did he die? Because I don't remember seeing any death notices. And he was the host of the Today Show, uh, or he was on the Today Show, and he was... Uh, uh, um, uh, let me see here, a host of 20, uh, 2020, I think, on ABC and whatever. Oh, Hugh Downs. Hugh Downs. Must be thinking, yeah. Alive or dead? Oh, alive. How old? Most of the original concentration. How old? Got to be like in his 90s. 98. Nine oh, almost in the Century Club. Yeah, you're right. Soon to be with Kirk Douglas. He was the host of, uh, the host of uh, a concentration. Yeah, yeah um, with the old boy, remember? Seven, Hugh. Seven. Now, how old? And how twelve. Old, how old is twelve? Kirk? Not a match. How that old, was his job. How old is Kirk Douglas? One hundred and two. One hundred and two. One hundred and two. Maybe you remember me playing Vincent Van Gogh in Lust for Life. Or you remember me from raping Natalie Wood when she was fifteen. <laughs> That's right. And then I got killed in a plane crash in harm's way. <laughs> No, but the whole the whole thing with Natalie Wood, you know, that uh, that's the that's the uh, thing you're never supposed to really talk about. Oh, know? did he did he rape Natalie Wood or yeah, something? Yeah, supposedly. Yeah, she was 15, and she went to see him for Yikes. a casting call, and supposedly he uh, had his way with her. Oh my God! Well, okay. well maybe so, she was into it. Maybe she wasn't, but she's 15. That's rape. So, or so Hollywood legend has it, and yet the yeah. Hollywood legend is pretty well believed. Uh, Yikes! Yeah, and he got away. With it. Maybe he had her killed. Maybe he uh, gave her a lead bathing suit. Yeah. <laughs> I call this one Starry Night. Someday some asshole's gonna write a song about it. I yes, got, lust I, for life. I gotta tell you something, Natalie Wood. In Rebel Without a Cause, gave me my first teenage heart on. How oh, well, she was gorgeous. She was like oh, 15 or 16 oh, when she did it. She was wonderful. She was just wonderful. Oh, she was beautiful. Yeah. Who, were there any, any, any actresses that affected you that way when you were younger? Sure. I remember my first crushes and my first boners. And I was a little kid. And one was for Sally Lewis and one was for Julie Newmar when she played Rhoda the Robot on My Living Doll. I remember, those shows. I remember just getting Newmar. a hard on for Julie and a hard on for Sherry. Ju- Julie Newmar was a very sexy woman, Catwoman. Yep, but she's still around. God bless her. Is she still around? Yep, still. She's in her eighties. She still looks good. She's older and has gray hair, but she's she's on Facebook. She posts stuff on Facebook. Oh, I'm gonna have to look. Her and uh, oh, did I love her? Oh, did I love her now, way back when? Now, why Sherry Lewis? Sherry Lewis was a puppeteer with a puppet called Lamb Chop. Lamb Chop. I didn't like the show, and I didn't like the little faggoty, uh, excuse that word, and she didn't like the little puss, pussified puppets. But uh, I liked the racist kind of puppet team of Ku Klux Klan and Ollie, but that's another story. Um, uh, I liked, she just, she was really pretty. She had, when she was young, when I was like five years old, four years old, she had this long, straight auburn hair and a pretty face. I just, I thought she was hot. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I ever found her sexy. But Julie Newmar, well, oh, man. Oh, God, yes. Oh, God, yes. Especially as, especially as Catwoman with that outfit on. But even before then, yeah. I just thought she was elegant and cool and just spacey enough to be a cool hippie chick. And even when I was like five, four, five, and six, I thought she was special. Well, my, I love Julie. Later, later on, Barbara Eden. 
I just, I saw uh, Natalie Wood, and I think Natalie Wood set the template for the kind of woman I found sexy for the rest of my life. Uh huh. Yeah. You know? Large doe eyes and dark hair. And dark hair. Lips. Russian. Hello. Well, that, she, was, she was Russian, you know. Uh, A Russian Jew, I believe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, she was Russian. And uh, uh, I've always had a thing for Russian women until they grow the mustache. You know, I mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They look like Olga, uh, someone named Olga. Hey, listen. But, uh, nice. Yeah, she was, there. some of them were super hot. Guess Later what? Later on, they turn on you, they beat you to death while you sleep and take your money and run back to Russia, but be careful. Guess what? We've run out of time. Oh, no. This was really our conversation's cooking, baby. Uh, the one guy I can talk to about these things. Yeah, without <laughs> Next week, Pinky Lee and Sandy Becker. Yeah, and now uh, this is all part of the Alta Caca programming we do here at Gabby. There you go. <laughs> Alta Caca, that's us. Thank you very much, Stephen Pearl. Thank you, Alex. It's always good to talk to you, and I'll talk to you again soon. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabby. The Great American Broadcast Network. It certainly is, folks. And thank you very much to Stephen Pearl. We love talking to him, and we hope you enjoy listening to him as well. Our Skype lines are now open. Officially open. Okay? Officially. Right now. You can call me. And uh, we will... Uh, uh, we will um, uh, uh, put you on the uh, on the on the uh, on the air here. Okay, all right. Okay. Uh, it, we have a thing called the Citizen Panel. If you want to find out what that's all about, go over to gabnet.net. Uh, don't worry, you won't miss any of the video of the show because it's playing over there right now. Okay, all right. Uh, so uh, give us a call. They give us a call. The call, the number uh, is, well, it's Gabnet Live if you want to use the phone, but if uh, it's Gabnet Live if you want to use Skype. It's, uh, there's a phone number over there if you want to use the number. You know what happened to me last night while I'm waiting for people to call? Uh, and it was, uh, it, was, it was a problem. Uh, and it happened two nights in a row to me. Uh, I got off the air last night. And my nose was uh, dripping, so I blew it. And as it did the night before, when I did the same thing, uh, I, I got a giant, giant nosebleed. I mean, I, I thought I was giving blood, Phil. Is this the same nosebleed that you had the other day? Yeah, the same one I had the night before. Apparently, you know, you get a scab over it, and it yeah. stops the bleeding. And then you probably shouldn't blow that nose for a couple of days, or pick at the nose hair. No, no but I didn't pick at it. I, no. I just I just blew my I just blew my nose, and the next thing I know, uh, it is I'm again I'm off to the races again. I'm holding my hand over my nose, and blood is pouring into it. And and I don't usually get nosebleeds, but this is a you know I'm sure this is a you know just a blood vessel deal. I don't think it's like. Yeah. cancerous or anything. Boy, everybody's calling at the same time. Hey, Jeff Stein. Yeah. Oh, okay. And he, here's uh, here's Josh Wheeler as well. Uh, have we got everybody on yet? Uh, wait a minute. Like uh, oh, wait a minute. Ray Renati's calling. I got another one. I got, it's, uh, there. Boy, everybody's calling all at once. What did I do? Did I say something? Did I... Uh, said so the lines are open. Oh, I said the lines are open. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'm in the same place as always. Yes, With the fans. The gym. Turn off the sound. Yeah, turn off the I, sound. I gotta so get my butt into the gym on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. You know. No, I joined. You know, <laughs> I pay. Uh, my, I have clothes in the locker that they wash, and uh, uh, they've been in there for months. So that means that every day they wash them, and even though I haven't worn them, uh, they get washed because they're in the bag. You're, you're doing. Trump doesn't exercise, so you shouldn't. That's all I'll say. Yeah, but uh, here's the uh, thing: he does exercise. You know, he plays golf. That's not exercise, obviously. Well, I'm not. I'm not even doing that. Yeah, uh, but no. But I, I, I just, I, I, uh, uh, yeah. I just, uh, I go to the gym. I, I belonged to that gym for three years before I went to it, and then I started going to it every other day. But lately, I've only been going about twice a week. 
you know. I, you know, I, I get a little tired of it. I don't know why Ray doesn't get tired of it, but he's in there every day pumping away, you know. Well, he's my in the drug boys line. Choice. How, how long do how long do you, in front of him. how long do you do on that bike? Well, I've been on it for thirty five minutes, and I, I'll probably go another thirty. Oh wow! I only I do twenty five minutes, and that's it. Twenty five. And then I'll go lift some, do some pull ups and stuff. I like the elliptical trainer, and uh, the Pilates machine. Uh, yeah. I took a bunch of yeah. Uh, you never use Pilates, them, but but you like Pilates them. Pilates were former classes, and uh, how many years ago? Uh, just before the, my operations. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, that was the time you started to work out again is when you found out you had prostate cancer. Uh, well, I was working out at that time, but uh, I didn't know I had the heart issues. Oh. Uh, and then, uh, you know, once, uh, once I had that, I stopped the uh, Pilates classes. And I was going to like the 5, 5.30 in the morning one. Uh, and, uh, you know... They they only have the beginner ones at certain times. Well, you know you you've days. averted you've averted death several times in the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, between the p prostate operation and the heart, what what they do with the what they do with your heart? Uh, Was it two two angioplasties, three stents? Okay, and a partridge in a pear tree. So yeah. you know, Bill, you need to get back. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, I like I like the reform. I don't industry. know. The prospects aren't that good, Phil. So what are you going to leave me? <laughs> you know, I was telling somebody today, I feel great. I feel oh, well, that's that's a sure sign you're going to be dead any day now. Don't say that. You, you know, know uh, I, I actually feel uh, um, 10 years younger. Matter, I made the uh, reservations for uh, the trip I'm taking in March. Uh, I have to stay at a hotel on March 1st and then another hotel on March 10th when the boat gets back, the boat leaves and the boat gets back. Mm -hmm. And um, it, when, when is be this cool to get eaten by a shark? Well, how, I mean, long, how long? How long? No, is I don't think that that's very cool. So, so <laughs> how long? How long are you going for? Eleven days. Eleven days. So it'd be eleven feel-free days. Uh, I, yeah. If there's no internet on the boat, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it'll be a, a, a liberal safe zone. <laughs> Please don't get eaten by a shark. I was joking. I don't yeah. want that to happen. Well, okay. my my buddy has done this trip twice bef before, and uh, you know he's still here to talk about it. So it's you, kind of like it, saying break away. So it's going. Yeah. It, it's a it's a scuba <laughs> yeah, he, it's a scuba boating tour. Is that what it yes. is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Scuba uh, underwater photography, all sharks. Six days of diving yeah. uh, with uh, all sharks, uh, hammerheads, and uh, tigers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's very nice. Don't get eaten. You know. Yeah. When are you going? When are you going? Uh, I'm flying out March 1st, and I'm returning on March 11th. Well, actually, what we can do is get a promo going so everybody knows that it's going to be a fill-free week and a half. Yeah, I, I hope so. You know. <laughs> and if you get eaten by a shark, it'd be fill-free forever. You know. Yeah. Could be. Hello to yeah. uh, hello to uh, Brian. We've been joined by Brian this evening. Hi there, Bry. Hello. That's uh, that's my nickname, Bry. How you doing, Bry? Um, the Ludwig Bry, Bry guy. Didn't uh, didn't uh, didn't Jack give you some kind of name or something? Uh, uh, Bryster. Separated at birth. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He well he he was giving people gangster names but they weren't really yeah. gangster. Oh yeah, they, yeah, but they, Brian. There's someone in my car, the trunk of my car, Ludwig. No, but oh. that's not a but that's not a mobster name. Mobster names are like Brian, the Cheetos Ludwig or something. You know. <laughs> Uh, you you remember that guy Steve the Ice Pick? He was yeah. The, see uh, Steve the Ice Pick, was, another good example. Right, uh, Steve was the uh, bouncer at the Condor and uh, uh, a friend of Conrad's. So they asked me uh, my name, and I, I ripped off Steve. I said, "Phil the Ice Pick." You know. Phil the Ice Pick, yeah. Um, that's, um, not a, that's not a mobster name. Yeah, somebody's got their audio on. Yeah, oh, a Bree is there. Yeah, that's me. I'm trying to turn it off. <laughs> there it is. It's off. Yeah, no, but if, I think Bree was trying to say something, but his mic is very weak. Are you there, Bri? Bree? How, uh, I'm here. I wasn't saying anything. Oh, though, oh you weren't. I, I oh, do have okay. a question for the panel. <laughs> oh, okay. What's the question, Brie? He's in Dubai, uh, by the way, right. well, everyone. 
I, I went to the dentist, uh, so I'm alive. Oh, that yeah. How did yesterday. that go? Did that go good? I mean, because yesterday he was fearful of going to the dentist, did, but you should have seen they the do picture. the root canal? Well, went, like, let me finish no, no. asking. Let me, can I talk and do the interview, Phil? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, if, you're, if you're practice a little first. Yeah. Uh, 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 now, uh, now what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, you showed the, us pictures. Uh, it was the dental operation. You, you showed us a picture <laughs> of your dentist, and I don't know why you were fearful. I, the only thing I'd be fearful of is, I, you know, the Me Too movement with her around me. <laughs> you know. Uh, so well, how did it go? It, it started off really well. Um, I didn't even have to have Novocaine for, you know, the first part. But then it devolved into, you know, a comedy of horrors. Um, Was the first part where you filled out the application? No, no, I did that the time before. No. Oh, that's so, in the but, States. Oh, wait a minute. Let him finish the story, Phil. All right, all right. But so... I guess, you know, my main question is, I, I can give you the story. I, I think everybody will have a good laugh at my expense. But, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, the right now, the bottom right tooth, it's tooth number 46, it's, it has a temporary there. But the temporary is not in, the like, the shape of a tooth. It's just, like, kind of a weird clump. And I don't know if that's normal or not. And it's, it's highly sensitive. Mm -hmm. And I can't really eat on it. You know what that is? That's a temporary uh, cap, I think. A temporary crown they threw on there. I've had but that. shouldn't it look like the? Uh, shouldn't it look like no, what it's no, going to look like? No, 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 no. Because what they do is they make a quick, uh, quick mold of something to put in there, so that you have some structure while they're going out and making the crown. Oh, I see. Three, uh, okay. Well, they... let me tell you that. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Bree. Okay. So. So I sit down, and there's no Novocaine, no nothing, and she's working on it. And then just stuff starts happening. Um, you know, like a couple of times, she's the drill. She's kind of losing the drill, and it's hitting other teeth. Oh, and, damn. You know, and just this the top part, not the drill part. But, you know, like just not instilling... Oh, she, oh, I know. I've, I've had that happen. It's not like she's drilling the other teeth, but in getting in there because it's kind of close quarters, the whirring part of it hits another tooth and that's you right. feel that. But that's not anything. So, so then the other thing that happened is one of the drill bits or something, I don't know, she needed something to be smaller and it was supposed to have a light on it, but she didn't have it. So she was asking her neighboring dentist if she could borrow that. But it didn't. But it turns out that the two were not compatible. So, you know, I'm sitting there. It's like 10, 10, 20 minutes, and then she dropped two of her tools during the <laughs> procedure, yeah. and then uh, the dental assistant had to go and help the other dentist instead of my dentist. It's like they were sharing a dental assistant. Yeah. And he, and then he came back in and they did the molds. They have to do a mold for the top and the bottom teeth. Yeah. The bottom mold, they didn't get right, so they had to do it a second time. And on the second time when she pulled it out, my gold crown on the other side came out. Oh. This was the half-off dentist? Yeah. No, this is the good-looking one that can supposedly get away with it because she looks so good. So she cemented the, the other, she said the other crown must have been very loose. That could and be. that this would probably probably have come off while I was eating in the next month or two and I would have swallowed it so she said it was lucky oh, yeah. and then she glued it back well that's because you don't because like, you don't have to sit the sift through your shit to retrieve the crown yeah did, did she charge you to glue the second the uh, gold crown back on no oh that was that, that was oh okay half off no. and a double double job three one time <laughs> one of my crowns the dentist dropped the crown in my mouth, this eight hundred dollar crown, and it went like part way down my throat. And he goes, "Don't swallow!" And he like sticks his finger uh, down my throat uh, <laughs> and pulls the crown out of my windpipe. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so things okay, didn't so. go that badly, but in comparison, uh, Bree, <laughs> uh, that was called CPR, Ray. Uh, you know, when, <laughs> when they were trying to remove the foreign object, 
you do it, uh, you hook your finger. Yeah. So Ray, do you? Do, it's okay that it's very, it's sensitive and it doesn't look like. No, it shouldn't be sensitive. It's okay. It doesn't look like it. But if it's sensitive, you should call them and tell them. They can fix that. Her, just need to her, her. Well enough. Remember, did, did, her. did you get a uh, root canal? You might no. need that. No. Okay. Well, maybe you need. It a root should canal. not be sensitive. That's exactly what happened to my tooth uh, back in twenty. Uh, I'm sorry. Twenty. Yeah. Twenty ten. No, 2012. Wait a minute. And, um, he, he, didn't get yeah. a root, he didn't get a root canal, so what did you get? Oh, hey, we have a full house already. I, I was getting a crown. Well, personally, it was supposed to be an, what is called an onlay. Inlay. And then, onlay? Inlay, yeah. And then she said, no, um, the tooth had enough micro fractures that she didn't think it could support this. So she said, let's go with the crown. And then she gave, you know, she gave me sensitive toothpaste, and she said, leave it on there for two or three minutes to let it work and then then you can brush yeah but i i don't know i still feel a lot of the the gunk when are you that, when you know, are you when are you supposed to mold. when are you supposed to see her next whenever the crown is done so monday tuesday wednesday thursday something like that well you might call her now is... you might call her now and say the tooth is sensitive and uh you know you'd like to know if that's to be expected all right Okay. You know, because well, for half off, on you only get half the See, uh, obviously, obviously what you have is a great fear of dentistry. And that it's fear is being played out in a lot of this uh, other sense. Like my tooth is sensitive. Well, it may be just mildly sensitive, but to you, it's a big deal. You know, psychosomatic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, not psychosomatic. He really has a, 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 a probably a sensitivity, Aversion. but he's oversensitive because of his fear of the dentistry. You're right. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and You're right, Alex. And quite frankly, you know, you know because I, when I was there and yeah. I I had some of the pain going on. Yeah. I, and then she shot me up with the Novocaine, and I could still feel stuff, and I was just like, just calm <clears> down <throat> because she's got to get this job done. And yeah. it's not going to get any better. Well, Just bear with it for a couple of seconds. The Novocaine, and let's get the this Novocaine done. does work. They didn't give you gas, though, did they? No. Oh, man. You're missing out on one of the few, few pure pleasures of life. I used to go to my <laughs> dentist, and he used to get me so loaded. The first time he ever did it, he was, you know, at that time, doctor, dentists were very hippie. He says, want to get high? You know, and he gave me the gas. And he said he liked using the gas because... It made the subject very compliant. In other words, mm -hmm. they say, open your mouth wide, and you go, ah! <laughs> you <know? laughs> um, But I love gas. You, you've had gas, right, Ray? No? You've never had gas? How about you, Kevin? Have you had gas? Never. I've got you gas right gas. now. Excuse me. Ugh. Okay. Yeah. Never. After and then women started reporting getting uh, assaulted. None of you have had gas. How about you, Rob? I used to. I used to sell couple the of gas. times. Couple of times for Rob. Rob's had gas, and wasn't it good, Rob? I, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't find a dentist who'll give it to me now. Why? They charge I, extra now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I they want no like thirty-five bucks like gas. That. Thirty-five bucks for the gas. But my dentist is so good that when he sticks the needle in, I don't feel it. You know, so I don't really need the gas. Uh, well, look how wonderful you are. Uh, hey, I got good teeth. Yeah, you got good teeth. I used to work at a plant that had the gas. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, nitrous I oxide. Or, uh, regular. USP, baby. Well, nitrous oxide, yep. which is what the gas is, is a gas that is also used in the theater. For cooling yep. lights. Okay? And so I knew a guy in the early days used to go around with a big blue canister of wow. nitrous oxide and go to parties and get people high. Just, just hey, have a whiff of this. It's actually a teal. Yeah, it's actually color is teal, yeah. Yeah, teal. And and the newer lights don't need it, unfortunately. Well, yeah, but but am I yeah. right they use nitrous oxide? Am I right, Ray? Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. So he, when he, when he so, that, but I don't see it anymore. So when he went, they to use that to make ice cream. When he I went think. to a gas house, no, that's nitrogen. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. nitrogen. Yeah. When he went to a gas house, uh, he would go in and say, "I work at a theater, and we need it for our lights." And so they give him a big tank of the stuff, and then he'd go around to every party in town and get people high because it was really cheap. He got a whole tank of the stuff for a couple of bucks, you know. Uh, yes, uh, Ludwig, you have your hand up. 
Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, part of, I'm thinking the part of the reason, or major reason why it's not like a complimentary thing to be uh, issued nitrous oxide when going to the dentist is because um, a lot of women over the years, I remember, uh, uh, reported being sexually assaulted and whatnot while they were put under. So maybe a liability thing. Yeah, so they use that and charge that and upcharge the customer for it. That could Probably. be too. Yes, Charles. Well, when, when I had it back in the 80s, yeah. uh, I don't remember passing out. I remember everything the dentist did. Oh, yeah, you I don't pass under, out. I just felt great. Yeah, they just regulate it. Yeah, they don't, you don't pass out. You, uh, you uh, go into this la-la land, and you're yeah. high, and all of a sudden, you're coming down from that la-la land while, let's say, your teeth are being cleaned, and she's still working on you because they know to turn it down or to change the mixture back to oxygen at a certain point so that by the time you get out of the chair, you're not reeling. But my doctor would send me out loopy, and I'd go down to the garage and get my car and not know which direction was home. You know. Yeah. Uh, when I was delivering this stuff, uh, you don't know how many offers I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, because uh, the, the speed shops also yeah. used it for their for their cars. They'd they'd buy the bigger bottles, nitrous and oxide. Then, yeah. uh, they would refill smaller bottles for the nitrous oxides in their cars. Oh well, here's and here's here's a little. At one point, yeah. our plant was was uh, being monitored. We had to, you know, we had to do inventories every day on the stuff, <clears throat> and the, uh, the there was a couple of speed shops in the Bay Area that were uh, over ordering just a little bit too much. Well, do you know? And, do you know that you can go to this day down to your local grocery store, buy some uh, whipped cream in, whip the, in the can. Yeah, whip it. We well, forget the, the whippets. Well, you can get those too, but the the, the, the um, cans. And, and then press it in a certain way so you don't get a mouthful of whipped cream, but you just get the air. And yeah. that's nitrous oxide, and it will yeah. get you loaded. Yeah, the tail, my, the tail my end brother, of the can, yeah. My brother worked at Friendly's Ice Cream Shop. Yeah. And after every time we'd go there when they were cleaning up, we were getting ready to go out. Uh, they used to save all the whipped cream cans that, that were, you know, emptied. Yeah. And, we, and we'd all do whippets in the back of Friendly's. <laughs> Well, that was where they put those whippets on the on the canister, right? And the milk was yeah, in it. And, yeah. That's, next those were the rest of the Tide Pods. Shots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get a little box of about 25 of them or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. A whole day's worth of uh, of uh, whipped cream at uh, Friendly. You, you know, those were the when days. You start when... scuba diving and you go down to about 90 or 100 feet, you get something called nitrogen narcosis. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, uh, you know, makes you feel high and. <laughs> so forth. You, you don't you don't get it after you've experienced it uh, once or twice. What does that have to but, do with nitrous oxide? We're talking about whippets. Well, it's nitrogen. You well, know. Uh, anyway, uh, so and it makes you high. So you know when you talk about cheap highs, okay. Way back when, they had anybody ever try morning glory seeds? What happened was morning glory seeds were a hallucinogenic. If you ate them. And so you would go down and you would buy like, you know, six packs or eight packs of morning glory yeah. seeds. And then you'd try and they tasted terrible and, and it really wasn't a pleasant way to consume. What's that noise? Morning glory oh. seeds. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was me yeah. eating some. It was... Uh, 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 but you would you would somehow figure out a way to consume them. One of the ways we did was we ground them up and then put them in in little capsules and thought we could do it that way, you know. But anyway, you got it into and after a while, yeah. you, you, I, then you threw up from the morning glory <laughs> seeds. But after that, you were high as a kite. You were you were hallucinating and everything. So now yeah. the the the. Uh, uh, seed company i can't remember the burpee seed company whoever the seed company was that had morning glory seeds it was heavenly blue morning glory seeds not just any morning glory seeds but heavenly blue um they finally started putting poison on the seeds because they knew everybody was using them to get high so they would so rather kill them would, yeah yeah <laughs> it, it's a Trump solution to a problem. Yeah, let's put it that way. I knew way. a guy that loved peyote. He did the same thing. Peyote did the same thing. You, you'd launch a bunch of peyote and then get a buzz like hell after it. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, peyote. Why the hell do you do that? He just he'd launch the well, shit the, and then the, just get a buzz yeah, for the they rest were, of the day. Oh, this is great. They were peyote <laughs> buttons, and people would would get uh, nauseous. So I just went to the. I, I I just went straight to LSD and said to hell with it, you know. Yeah, you save all that. And and uh, had some fine trips for a while, you know. So, yeah. No, I remember when we used to uh, deliver the nitrous. Usually, about two or three days after we'd get phone calls at the plant, uh, we've got this big cylinder in our front lawn. Uh, we need to get picked up, and it was usually somewhere in Berkeley. <laughs> and it was on somebody's front lawn, and there was a dead concert, usually about a day before or two. We'd go over there and pick it up off their lawn. Yeah. Well, actually, it was a drug that couldn't hurt you, you know? No, you would just, if you did too much of it, you'd asphyxiate yourself. But. Well, no, you had to be, make sure you took in. You know, what happens when you go to the dentist, there's a mixture of the nitrous oxide and oxygen. It was, yeah, air, yeah. And an, air, when, an air oxygen and, mix. And, yeah. and people had a tendency with this stuff to just take a mask full of pure nitrous oxide. Yeah. And yeah. and because they were breathing that more than they were breathing oxygen, yeah, they could asphyxiate themselves. Correct. So the it, nitrous oxide sounds like it's nitrogen and oxygen, which is basically what air is. Uh, you know, it's it's 21%. Oxygen, well, seventy nine percent nitrogen. Who died and made you the scientist around here? I'm a scuba diver. Come well, on. Yeah, but, is, yeah. All right. Well, and next I'm, time I'm you go scuba diving, up, instead of putting an oxygen tank on your back, put a nitrous oxide tank on your back. <laughs> and Just those, go down to hundred feet. You'll 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 get the uh, yeah. you'll you'll get the high. Charlie. Yeah. In in air, you have nitrogen gas and you have oxygen gas. Nitrous oxide is a chemical combination of the two. Air is not a chemical combination. Well, correct. How? How? It, but it, it it sounds like nitrogen and oxygen. Well, that's what it oxide. sounds like. But Charlie is telling you of what well, it is. So, Charlie so, obviously has some expertise in this field, right, Charlie? Uh, a little. Yeah. 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 All right. So. Yeah. What the hell? What the hell? An Alex. oxidizer. Oh yeah. Alex. yeah, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, isn't that what uh, Kevorkian used on his patients? What nitrous, nitrous oxide? No, I don't think so. No, 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 no. Uh, what did he use though? Uh, I can't remember what he used. It was nasty stuff. Yeah, but it, it put him to uh, sleep, and it was harmless. It was a chemical, though. wasn't it? Uh, uh, an ingested uh, chemical, I thought. I don't. I don't know. It was a pill. Remember. Listen, we got a little problem that now. Once again, <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson has been busted. Oh, of course. Oh, something new, huh? Misconduct with a fourth woman who says the star scientist sexually harassed her at a party or harassed her. I don't, that's the way you pronounce it, actually. Uh, Brian, pr forgive me for being the verbiage police. <laughs> Um, You're forgiven. Yeah, uh, the he harassed her at a uh, at a party in 2010. Shouldn't there be a cutoff date for this shit? I mean, do you realize 2010 sounds like just a little while ago, but that was actually eight years ago. You know, and and nobody made up the rules of conduct at that point. And you know, what she may have taken as harassment may have just been him going, "Hey, you're good looking. I'd like to go out with you. Would you like to have dinner sometime?" Or Want to come back to my place or whatever? Anyway, the woman who remains anonymous, that's the other part that bothers me because then they can make say anything they want to. De describe the incident in a BuzzFeed News report published Wednesday. also includes accounts by Tyson's uh, uh, three previous accusers. According to BuzzFeed, the unnamed woman said Tyson drunkenly approached her at a holiday party the American Museum of Natural History and made sexually charged jokes asking her to join him alone in his office. Yeah. BuzzFeed reports the woman also shared a 2014 email she wrote to her employer describing the incident mm -hmm. in order to discourage the employer uh, from inviting Tyson to speak at an event. Now, let me, let me get this straight, okay? And I, I'm not here to defend Tyson's behavior. I think you should always act decently towards other people and not make them feel uncomfortable. But all this amounts to is him telling some dirty jokes and inviting the woman back to his office, which she didn't do. Now, is that, does that 
does that sound like harassment to you? Does that sound like, uh, you know, he touched my pussy? It, 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 we didn't even see that in here, you know. It sounds to me like he's more than qualified to run for president of the United States now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, he, I didn't see him say something like, I want to enter your black hole, you know, so, I mean. Over Uranus. Uh, or go to Uranus, right? My, hell, my, my my Hubble telescope is curious and exploring your black hole. <laughs> Will you let it? <laughs> but anyway, the point is, the point is, come on. Plus, this guy does so much good in making people understand about the universe. Come on. Like, hey, Alex, like enlighten us on how uh, syphilis may have originated in the Americas, right? So, oh, so what you're saying is that... <laughs> You're He's saying that he's doing a really good job, so we can't impeach him now, right? What? What? You're saying that Neil deGrasse Tyson does a really good job, so we can't impeach him now. I mean, we can't fire a guy who's doing a really good job. No, I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. Uh, well, uh, uh, but I, I just think that, does this sound like a, like what you would call a horribly offensive incident? <laughs> This woman went through, or and and shame on BuzzFeed for even making a big deal out of it, you know. Um, yeah, they're they're just trying to cover up their uh, mistake that they made with Trump and uh, uh, Cohen. No, they they probably didn't make a mistake with Trump and Cohen. It's just they couldn't uh, prove your, it. Your 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 God uh, Mueller says they did. Uh, uh, oh, no, the, oh, no, 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 no! Don't take it too much out of context. He's just, he has a problem with something that they said. He didn't say the whole thing was bogus. You, I guess uh, it's a liberal prayer. All right. Well, okay. by the way, Phil, 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 mm -hmm. just, just for grins, how do you feel about the fact that Trump caved to Nancy Pelosi? It's not Woo! over yet. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, he hasn't signed it. Yeah, you know, he could be testing the waters. It's no, called wait a minute, trial wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, 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 Phil, Phil. They, they, you're not, you don't even know what we're referring to. Yeah, they put the vote up and... No, uh, no, and that isn't what we're referring up. to. Tell them what we're referring to, Rob. Yeah, the, it was uh, 55 No, no, to, no, 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 That's not what we're talking that's about. That's not what we're talking about, Phil. We're talking about the State of the Union address. Oh. The speech. Yeah, well, you know, I... I could understand Pelosi not wanting to stand behind Trump and have to grimace the whole time. Uh, you know, Phil, you know, she, Phil, Phil, I asked you a very literal question uh, about something which would uh, uh, he, compromise your yes. beliefs. Hold on a second. Uh -huh. This man who you hold in high esteem because he never gives up and he pushes ahead just right. got one up by Nancy Pelosi. Well, this is what the this is what the pundits are saying, but it isn't done until it's done. And uh, well, it's, done. it's done. He says he's not going to do the. Yeah, he, the you didn't hear this. He, he said he's not he going to do well, the State that, of the that's Union a address. That you don't need to fight. What's the difference? Well, but he was he fighting says, it until yesterday. Uh, yeah. And, and then, then, then he finally that, said. Then he finally the said. Then he finally the way, said. Wait a minute. Let me finish. He finally mm -hmm. said. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to. Um, uh, I'll wait for the uh, the uh, uh, government shutdown to be over with to give the speech, and then today he said Nancy Pelosi was very wise in her decision. Hmm. Well, he might have had a reason. Maybe By the they way, were holding Phil, his kid hostage. By the way, Phil, those votes today that that uh, yeah. those that that in failed. Yeah. yeah. Do you know that more Republicans crossed over and voted for yeah. the Democratic? Um, oh, I, you know. I know uh, that uh, it wasn't enough. Uh, I don't think there was enough votes to pass. Is it that did not, right. Not enough votes. But given the two different, the Republican and the Democratic uh, options, mm -hmm. more Republicans crossed over and voted for the Democratic option versus how many Republicans. Weren't how many there Democrats? Democrats that crossed over to the Republican option? Uh, the numbers were minuscule one. compared to oh, one. one. Yeah, it was uh, Mansion, I think. No. Yeah, he's West Virginia, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he had no choice. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. wants coal. He wants coal. Yeah. No. <clears throat> you know, it's clean. If AOC. Yeah, well, it, it, well, it's fun to, funny to me. I mean, but all I'm saying is, Phil, 
Pelosi won this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, possibly, yeah. No, not possibly. Yeah, she did. Phil, say. She but won this it's one. Not, it's not over yet. What do you mean it's not over? Oh, it's over. That's Until, over. You know, he also said that he was going to sign the bill uh, originally, and then uh, when it came to him, he didn't sign it. You know why? Yeah, because he just, well, you're you're going to say it's because pundits and Republican talk show hosts. That's correct. Him out of it. The, the Coulter went on uh, Fox well, and said it would be Coulter terrible if he so did this. Coulter is anti-Trump right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, know. but 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 still, uh, even, he, he uh, would... even Michael Savage wasn't uh, happy with him. Uh, hey. yeah. I don't know. There may be a reason why he's doing it. So what's going it'll, on it'll with Kellyanne Conway? Once the shutdown is done, what's going on well, with Kellyanne Conway? She's still yeah, looking. All this, these secrets of Kellyanne Conway's success, and supposedly she's she's been a leaker in the Trump administration. She's <laughs> been one of the leakers. Uh, I have no idea. You know, they uh, they say a lot of things about a lot of people. And uh, maybe it was pillow talk with her and George. Boy, I love how you yeah. parse this whole thing, Phil. You just want to. Well, hey, you, know, you, you just want to. You just really, want to parse it the way you want to parse it. No, I'm not parsing it. I'm parsing it exactly I, I as Trump it is reported. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. He didn't win any battle. He didn't yeah, win. Nancy Pelosi isn't at Davos. No, wait. What? She's not at Davos oh, right now. She it, had to get off the plane. It, no, that was all part of their little pissing match going on. But she yeah. won the pissing match, Phil. He gave I in. He caved. Over, he caved. Phil. He caved, Phil. He caved. He caved. He said, first he was saying yesterday, I'm going to show up at the, at the at Congress and give the speech anyway. Didn't he say that, get people, in his uh, right. tweets? Uh, and then, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, but he can give it to wait the Senate. Minute. Wait a minute. No, 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 he, he can't. The, no, he can't. He potentially going to see the Senate. Instead. Yeah, yeah. But he was but looking for other not. ways to do it. And then finally, last night, he said, I've decided that I'm not going to go until uh, the uh, the uh, uh, um, government shutdown is over so. with. And, uh, uh, and uh, so he basically caved in to Pelosi. Well, that's the way during, you, during you that see hour it. And a half. No, th that's you know, no way. That's not I the see way it I see. As a man it. that wants to negotiate, and I see that the left refuses to negotiate. They refuse oh, to come Phil. to the table, oh, Phil, and Phil. they are the ones Phil, that are holding Phil, the government hostage. Phil, shut your pie hole. Jeez, uh, hey, you know, Almighty! You can't take the Phil, truth, Phil. You can't take the truth. <laughs> you can't yeah. take the fact that your little hero yeah. caved. Uh, uh, you, know, you know, that's that little rebut sounded like uh, you're a poo poo head. You that's know? just one pussy Trump can't grab. I'm not a. Well, it's one pussy he doesn't want to grab. Uh, I, I, there's, I, I, there's spider webs across that one. Oh, yeah. You're going to make fun of her uh, vagina, huh, Phil? Yeah, yeah me too. Make fun of his tiny Hashtag. dick, his tiny hands. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, with his tiny dick and his tiny hands, yeah. Well, we all know Trump has a tiny dick because that's what. Uh, What's her name? Mushroom shape too. Yeah, mushroom really shape. So the, yeah, but yeah. he banged her, and and yeah, we did barely. Her. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So, and the Playboy Bunny. So. Oh, and CNN like a, and they, and they must have liked it. Wait a minute, Char and, their, and their appearances are brought to you by the makers of money. Uh, Charlie, exactly. Charlie, Charlie, money turns, Char Charlie, Wall the to, uh, Fabio. Charlie Wallace. <laughs> Yeah, actually, uh, he can't go to the Senate either because Nancy Pelosi, a Speaker of the House, controls the Sergeant of Arms, and she can refuse to let him into the Capitol <laughs> at all. <laughs> Why can't he do it from the White House? He can do it from the White House. She said he could. Yeah, yeah. because Trump, he's a limelight guy. Why does he need a, 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 a you know, uh, oh, half of the Oh, uh, oh what does Congress he need it for, Phil? Sit there Phil, and say what does he need it for? The other half this is the, the he needs it. What, him what he needs it for is that this his is his ego. limelight. His ego wants to be there at the Capitol giving the State of the Union address. I think his ego would be better served doing it from the White House and going after the. Uh, 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 block uh, the blockage that, people that would show weakness no yeah, president has up. done that that would show weakness like he lost this way he conceded and he did it in a very diplomatic presidential way because you know he didn't write the tweet but in the but what they did was they chose the best out they could because if they would have given that speech at a, at a rally or from the oval or any place else 
it would have looked like he was weak and that he lost to Nancy. This way he agreed with her. He actually agreed in the tweet with her. That was the only way he can get it. And he actually it. today he said something nice about her. He it, had to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So talk, talk about caving. Today. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, he we'll see he how this turns out. I, you know, just like BuzzFeed, I think they, you're uh, jumping to conclusions. No, we're not jumping to conclusions. This is the news. This is this was his tweet. This uh, is his. Th no, this is what he said. Wait till tomorrow. This is what he it's said. The way the, you parse it. No, we did. Go back and watch it, Phil. Go back and watch it. I heard it. He's uh, trying to bring and, his disapproval rating back down to 63 instead of 64. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's a yeah. Well, I think maybe his disapproval rating went up because there's a lot of Republicans that aren't happy with uh, uh, his uh, position. But he may have a he he may have a different take on it. I mean, you know, the guy is different. He doesn't have a take on anything. The man is so clueless; it's ridiculous. Okay, uh, we'll see. The hey, only, did the you hear the shit that they were talking about these 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 people going to the pantries today? And Wilbur Ross is telling them. Yeah, well, to go I was going to talk about Wilbur Ross. The, the, and the, yeah, and well, it makes sense. Trump Commerce Department says, "Well, just go to the grocery store. They don't make you pay." No, they'll, they'll no. Let you go this, this is a multi-millionaire who. Wait, I mean, this is a multi-millionaire. Listen to me, Phil. This is a multimillionaire yeah. who was telling these people that they should go get a loan. I guess he knows how to save money, not like the people that can't are living. Pay they don't have uh, money. They don't have money well, to save, Phil. But they could we have money. Just we put on a Excel loan Excel application. Hey, Wilbur God. Ross. How much can you pay per month and you don't have a zero there because hey, you didn't get paid? Wilbur, Wilbur Ross told them that it would be like a federally guaranteed loan. They could go to the Federal Credit Union. They could get a loan. They would be on the hook for some interest. But they could get they'd be on the, the hook for some union. interest. They they'd be on the hook for some interest. Are you listening to yourself, Phil? 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 Are you who somehow think that people who are living from paycheck to paycheck, not because they're wasting money, but because they're spending it and need it, that these people somehow didn't save enough money. They should have saved for a rainy day. Yeah. Exactly. You know, they've had a lifetime to do it. Yeah. And, and they know that the government gets shut down. Phil, uh, can you do that? Often. Can you do that on $35,000 a year? Uh, yeah, you can save, you know, 350 or 5% of your income. And, uh, and you know, yeah. and if there's a uh, shutdown, uh, eventually yeah. it'll get replaced. Bills. Phil, you uh, live in a dream world. You know, I made... I, I lost 45% of my, my income when I got laid off. I can't do it. Yeah, because... But you're not getting a check as soon as the government opens back up. You're contract. not getting a check for all your back pay. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a check every month, and I'm having a hard time but getting from not, month to month. Phil, back yes, pay doesn't do you people, much good. Back pay doesn't do you much good when your stomach is grumbling and you can't yes, buy food but now. You go to the Federal Credit Union no, and pay with and when the back pay and, comes, and, uh -huh, you pay off and, the loan. And with interest. With interest. With interest. Now, how much interest? Interest is what? 3%, 4% now? What do you mean? Are they interest is interest. Are loans right now? Are mm -hmm. they going to work to process those loans? Interest oh, rates are like 7.5%. Credit and a half unions? Percent. The, I don't think that those guys are furloughed. Oh, yeah. The interest is 7.5%. Yeah, like that's seven a 7 or 8. Yeah, so that's a half a percent a month. Uh, th or th a little over half a percent a month. Phil, uh, why should these people? Why should these people? Because they're not getting paid the money they were told they were going to get paid. Have to go get a loan from the very people who owe them the money Plus, and then pay them interest. Isn't that rather reality? Isn't that That's bullshit? No, it's not. It's not, it's not, not reality, fair, Phil. No, it's not fair. Life isn't fair. Oh, my, my liberal, my liberal heart. Life's not fair. Well, billionaires are currently at seventy percent tax rate. Trump already saying things are. Life's not fair. I got a question, Phil. Have you been blowing Wilbur Ross? 
<laughs> you know, well, life, you know, life's not, not fair. Like when it, type, but, uh, you know, when it, com- when it comes to health, life's not fair. People get diseases. People, you know, shit happens. Nothing's but fair. This is, this is completely avoidable if yep. you had a president with a little bit of a of a if life of a was heart. fair, I'd be six foot two, one hundred and eighty pounds, and and a sh- nine inch schlong. But it's not <laughs> that way. Well, then you'd be <laughs> if you did that. If you did that, wait a minute. If he did deciding whether to pay rent, if you did that, Phil, therapy is is not fair. If you did if you did, th- if you did that, Phil, Republicans. if you did yeah, that, yeah, Phil, yeah, Phil no, just, uh, I can't even say thing. anything here. What? Phil, did you ever go what? broke? Yeah. So, how'd you... Did you, you I did what I had to do. Did you have enough I, money I, saved up, Phil? Shit. Did you have some I money? Sold shit. I did whatever I had to do to do what I had to do. Whose fault was it that you went broke? Was it your own fault? Uh, everything, when it boils well, right no, down well, no, 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 no. Dude, yes, was it the government it's, that it's made oh, you go no, broke? It, well, it's, I believe that it's always your own fault when something happens. Oh, please. And But when you work for the government and you know that there are shutdowns and that your job is in jeopardy of being affected by shutdowns, you put uh, some money aside. That's just the way it is. When you, you know, know there's it, shutdowns, you mean you go to work for the government knowing there's going to be a shutdown? Yes, and it's happened before, and it, and it's and it's happened often enough to know that you got to have a rainy day fund. When did the shutdown start? Uh, I, about twenty years ago. Twenty years about ago. Twenty yeah. years ago. Before so that, most, there was it was a good solid job to have. Well, life yeah. life is not static. Okay. You know? Uh, things right. because the laws were changed by the Republicans. So it used to be oh, the, the Republicans. Republicans. There's the answer. There's the answer. <laughs> the let answer. Charlie make yeah, his let, point. Let, let Phil let shut up and let Charlie make so. it. Let Charlie dealing today. Phil, you can't make your point by trying to talk over somebody. All right. Oh. And and Charlie was saying something, and then right. Jeff wants to say something. Well, you usually make your point by talking over me. <laughs> so, because I, I can't saying, shut you up long enough change. to make it. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, before 20 years ago, you could not have a, a government shutdown. The government had to pay its bills. Hey, 20 years ago, I had a 30-inch waist. You know, it's uh, the, nothing Nothing is static. Life has changed. And if you haven't figured out in the last 20 years of your career that there yeah. are government shutdowns, shame on you. Uh, we have, a, uh, we have a, a, a royal flush. Who just called us on the phone? Must be Tim. It's me, Tony. Can I say one thing to Alex? You're right, Alex. With his oh, loans. hey, you like, kissing more ass, Tony? <laughs> no, you know why? Why should they pay interest like Alex? You better go to a gangster. Come on, yeah. Phil. Yeah, Can't seven and a half percent. Seven and a half percent is like going to a gangster. No, all of a sudden, you know, seven and a half percent is a little over uh, half a percent a month. Half a percent a month, somebody borrows five thousand, ten thousand uh, dollars for for two months or three months. It's only going to cost them about what seventy five bucks. You well, know, but Phil, it shouldn't have to cost like them to the anything. Mafia. It shouldn't you know, the have way to. You spend money, Phil. It doesn't matter. You're right. As a matter of fact, as a matter you know, of fact, you've the got gov- a lot of money and you yeah. and you spend it. As so a matter of fact, it's not a big deal. Let me jump in here. I don't. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. The government, oh, sh- right. sh- the government, besides being on the hook for the rest of for the money they owe them from the time they were not getting paid, should have to pay interest on that money to the people. Maybe they do. No, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> no. Well, you know, uh, these these oh, uh, goes. government Phil, workers Phil, have been Phil, on the Phil, public Phil, dole Phil, 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 that, Phil. That's enough, Phil. That's enough, Phil. That's enough, Phil. Jeff's got his hand up, Phil. Jeff's got his hand up. Jeff's got his hand up. Jeff's got his hand up. Yes, thank you. Yes, Jeff. I think, Phil, you got a mistake. You assume that these problems are from these people who are uh, work for the government. Are most of them still working there, and they're not getting any 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 money? And you're thinking that it's their problem. It's Trump's problem. No, He's the guy who life. came up. Wait a minute. He's the one who came up this this idea. That's He's victim thinking. No, I heard him no. say when he was in his office that he was going to take, take the, the heat for it. He was going to take it. Well, he's not, Proud. though. He's not. Well, yes, he is. No, you he's know, not. He the buck stops with know, everyone. He cave to uh, Nancy Pelosi <laughs> because he wants to end everyone. I love that he, line. The buck stops with everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah, he said. It, it sounds like the liberal victim mentality here. 
Oh, oh he's the one who always Trump's says that he's the victim. Republicans. Phil, quit talking over me. He's oh. the one who said he's okay. the victim all the time. He's always saying he's a victim. Oh, the, the, the fake press, the bullshit news, they're making me the victim. He's saying that constantly, Phil. Constantly. Yeah. And you know it. Well, he is he the victim. Oh, give me a fucking <laughs> break. All right, I'm done. My loyalty. <laughs> I love you too, so, Phil. It's so, right. so cultish. What's that? Oh, God, is it ever. The way you sound, the, br- the blind loyalty, you can't, with everything that's happened in two years, the way the news cycle changes every 15 minutes, a, a, a thing, if it would have been a Democrat, forget about it, they'd have blown up. See, I whole, believe that he's on, under- not done yet. Oh, okay. You have blind loyalty to all of it. There isn't one thing where you go, oh, oh, well, that's no, oh. It's blind loyalty. It, it sounds cultish. Well, he, he's yeah. under attack from the left. And when you're under attack, and, the left and, is the enemy. And the, and yeah. And, the, he's and starting Obama to become a, he's, the right. He's starting and to, he's right starting to come under attack from his, his own right wing. Yeah, well, because his own right wing is part of the swamp. Mm. Oh, jeez. Uh, swamp is what's in the White House. Yeah. yeah. News for you. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know uh, that's uh, uh, that's now, easy for you to now, say because you want to blame somebody. I no, I I I just love the fact that his attorney, his fixer, who they know each other so well, is now threatening like the like like the Godfather when Pantangelo was in was was in the courtroom and they and he brought his brother in there because he was going to testify against uh, the mob boss, and he starts yeah. saying, it's and the same all shit of a sudden. Family. All of a sudden, it's true. It's like a crime. All of a sudden, Cohen is so trustworthy that you believe everything he says. I believe. Him. You know? I like oh, no, yeah. no, Phil, you know no, Phil. But I would I like to hear what he has to say. Like what he has to say is a lie. Everything that comes out of his all. mouth is a lie. He doesn't believe anything. It's amazing. Yeah, Bree is right. Them all. Yeah, but you know, it does no good to blame. It just does good to you. You pull up your boots and you do and, what you got to do. Minute, and Trump is the most honorable person in the room. Am I right? Uh, he's just as honorable as the rest of them. No, no, that's that's not an answer, Phil. You know, I have the answer to stop this thing immediately. That he does. Uh, I I think if he could write a uh, what are those things he writes uh, uh, and then signs in the fancy the book resolution uh, executive resolution executive order. right. The resolution should be that if the government shuts down, that none of the uh, uh, Senate or the House gets paid. That uh, checks I agree stop there. and benefits. I agree, I benefits agree with stop, you more there. Medi- medical benefits. I, stop, I, I, of course. We all agree that. We that all would agree be great. You'll yeah. we'll never do that. And then you'd Some never of them see a shutdown. Have voluntarily done well, the, I already. don't think I don't think that the medical benefits for the workers who are not working right now are being stopped. Not no. yet. No, but so. they should be stopped for the for the for the Congress. Uh, you know. Some of them have voluntarily done that. And how many of them are Republicans? Yeah. Well, I know Trump is volunteering. Yeah, okay. I've seen uh, a few of them question. Them. Okay. Wait a minute. Questions. Jeff, Jeff, let Jeff talk. If you're a comp- an employee of the government and you have a limited amount of money you get and you happen to pay for certain pills or medications, they can be very expensive. Yes, they can. More expensive than a lot of these people. How afford. much do you think a government employee pays for his pills? Do you think they pay less than most people? No. That they got better insurance than all of us? Uh, no. They, no, they don't. Uh, I don't know. Do you well, know, I know the se- I know the Senate and no, the Congress you know does. That. I know the Senate and the Congress Well, does. tell us what their plan is, Phil. Uh, We're not talking not about Kaiser. This. No, no, tell us what their plan is, Phil. You seem to be so knowledgeable about what the Congress gets in their, in their health From plan. From what I understand is their health care is paid 100%. And, yeah. uh, you know, and they, you know, and they also. Got dental. I don't know. <laughs> there is no doubt well, for I, anybody. I only only in Dubai. <laughs> I did see a government lady uh, interviewed today or yesterday that was deciding whether she's going to be paying her uh, rent or continuing with mm-hmm. her chemotherapy. Yeah. Well, if she doesn't continue with the chemotherapy, she's not going to have to worry about the rent. My mother, oh, right. member, my mother <laughs> yeah. is a member of the ACWU. Tell that to her face. Say yeah. that to her Say face. Say that right to her, her, to her yeah. family. 
All right. Bam, what bam. happens? No, tell her to tune in. Say that to my mother. That yeah. were my mother. He guaranteed yeah. goddamn tea. You wouldn't be leaving the house. Well, the there's That's no there's door. no choice for yep. her but to do the chemotherapy. And you know, but the thing and is, she can get street, alone. Right. Yeah. Go she, sit on the bus can, stop and wait for chemotherapy. Right. No, she could get alone, just like Wilbur Ross said. Yeah, okay. You. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Holistic answers. Hold on a second. As members of Congress debate whether to repeal or replace the Affordable Care Act, it seems fair to ask. How much do they pay for health care? The answer is that they don't pay nothing for coverage, but they they don't pay much. As the myth-busting websites Snopes points out, contrary to popular belief, congressional members do not receive free health care. Instead, they choose a gold-level Obamacare policy and they receive federal subsidies to cover 72% of the cost of the premiums. Jeez. Okay. That's a good deal. Well, it's a good deal, but uh, it you know it's a way, it's a way of paying for, it, but it isn't a hundred percent. You know, how many of them are over sixty five? Not and even just an eighty percent. It's not even an eighty percent. Uh, my policy. mother, my mother is a federal employee. She has the APL, a, a, APWU, the American Postal Workers. She pays every month for it. She has co-pays, all that stuff, just like everybody else. I and don't think. Retired. The- Senate and House, they don't have co-pays. They don't have deductibles. No, don't, they don't, they yeah. have to pay 30, uh, 28% of the premiums, but they pay nothing after that. We have well, to pay a certain percentage of the premiums, and we have co-pays and deductibles. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah, right. Charlie. And you're saying, what about the ones that have Medicare? I think the ones that have Medicare, their uh, they're, they're congressional health plan pays the, uh, the overage. Pays the, you know, yeah. the, the does the, uh, uh, the, uh, the difference, the difference, yeah, yeah, but uh, because hey, what they got it pretty good, uh, you know, and uh, there's and in the private sector, there's plenty of times that you can't cash your paycheck, you can't get a paycheck. They got it pretty you good. Reach Phil, into your Phil, do you know the well, of it a bill? If you, you look at it, it never that's happened kind to of me. The way Trump is, you've never been an employer, thing, just like a freaking corporation. He's he's almost on strike. He's almost treating this just like a corporation, like he's always treated the government since he's been there. And yeah. it's almost like he's gone on strike. Well, a lot of people go on strike. Why can't he? Yeah, you well, got this the isn't teachers the union fucking, in L.A. This isn't his corporation. This wait, is wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Just one moment. And I'll let you come back here uh, and, and finish what you were saying, Kevin. Phil... Don't bring up the teacher strike in L.A. in this discussion. It's a not, that's a whataboutism, and it just completely well, throws it throws the whole conversation off. Now, so you're saying that you don't it want throws any bargaining. It throws the whole the conversation. I say that I, th- I say I'm with the teachers in L.A. Those classrooms are overcrowded, and they need relief from that. They're not suing for more money. Phil, they're suing for smaller classrooms, and that benefits you and me oh, if we are have kids. They're suing for more money. Yeah, that's. Phil, like they're reaching classes. into their pockets to buy supplies. Uh, I have friends I who are teachers, and these are Long Island <laughs> teachers who have, you know, the, the school districts have more money. And every year they're buying their own supplies for the classroom, and they and then they ask the kids. My ex girlfriend to bring stuff. My ex girlfriend. My ex, wait a minute. Hold on a, a second. Huge my huge surplus my, right now. Wait a minute. A huge surplus. My ex girlfriend. Uh, just a moment, Bree, and then we'll go to you. Uh, my ex girlfriend uh, was a teacher, and we used to go to San Rafael, where she would go from teacher bookstore to teacher bookstore asking them if they had any cast-offs that she could have so she could take them back to her classes where she worked in Richmond. They did not have enough money for books. And as a matter of fact, back in those days, they had one computer in the whole school, and it got stolen by one of the janitors. You know, I mean, it, it was terrible. Just terrible. So I've Phil, got a 13-year-old in the next room that I can tell you all kinds of stories about bringing supplies to schools. Really? Tell me about it. Tell us about it. i tell you all about it. Go ahead. I'm bringing handy wipes. I'm bringing Clorox wipes. I'm bringing yep. pencils, yep. Uh, bags of paper, just yep. to keep them going. And I'm not the only one. Well, hey, I had Everybody two kids. Everybody I that, know. No, no, forget about I you and your two kids. kids. Phil, be quiet for a second. Be quiet for a second, okay? And all let right. these other people tell their yeah. experiences. Um, we know you've lived every life experience there is, and you have a comment on every one of them. But of course. Go back. Go Kevin's, back to Kevin's, my, Kevin's running the place like a corporation is what I was getting at. Yeah. 
well, you know, he, his idea of running the United States like a corporation is that you, you burn it down and then collect the insurance. Uh, yeah. Jeff, but, Jeff, you, you had your hand. Did I see Jewish? your hand up, Jeff? No, no. <clears throat> okay. Alex. Yes, uh, Bree. All right. Here's my question. I, I sort of lost, uh, you know, following the story, but the one thing that I heard was that the House had uh, said, okay, $5.7 billion for border security. We approve it, but uh, not for the wall. And right. so, so it, doesn't it seem like we could just give the border security people the money and let them figure out how they want to do it? Yeah. They're the ones down there. Can't we hear from them? Can't well, we bring in yeah, uh, a committee and, and say, okay, look, government shutdown over. Here's the 5.7 for border security. And let the people who do the border security figure out how the, how to spend it. Yeah. Bree, they offered them twenty five billion like six eight months ago, twenty five billion for border security. Signed off. The president was going to sign off on it until Rush Limbaugh didn't like it, and so he wouldn't sign it. He wants the wall. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Here here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because here, here's years where the now, Democrats are absolutely the right. They want to give the money for, to border security. Because most people agree the wall is an antiquated idea that goes along, as somebody said, with moats and crocodiles, okay? And that it, it is not an answer for today's problem. And, uh, and this money could be better used to be put towards technology, towards reinforcing the troops, the people that are down there guarding the borders and the checkpoints and all of that. And, and you're right. They should be the ones who spend the money because they know where it, where it can be spent and where it can be spent effectively. But, you know, a, a wall, a wall. No, they don't. They don't. A wall is as old-fashioned as Trump's concept that oil is going to save this country. Okay? Coal. Yeah, coal, rather. Uh, Kevin. And all it is is a symbol of Trump. If you go back to the documentary... Remember that documentary? He used to like to fly over New York and look out the window and say, look at that building, look at that building, look at that building. Now in 10 years, he can get into his little helicopter and fly over and go, look at my wall. I did that. Look at my wall. That's all it is. It's, yep. it's a symbol of Trump. Exactly. I believe that's all it is. Okay, Phil, now you can say something. Uh well, Maybe he can sign it and put his big gold numbers on it. Yeah. You know, uh, he's he's asking to build 115 miles of wall this year uh, that uh, are in strategic areas. He's not looking for a, a, a wall that That's goes a downgrade, from sea to shining That's sea. a downgrade from what he said he was going to do. Well, well it's 237 miles. Uh, well, the, the 5.7, I think, only gets him 115 miles. Now, there is no, the five point seven uh, is not going to get him any that, wall. Is not going to get him any wall. It's going to go towards border security. Well, it, well, we'll it's see. We'll see about be. that. What you know, uh, and I, 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 bet, I agree. I'll bet that on they, Pelosi. I'll bet on. Need, yeah, I'm betting on Pelosi too. You know, they need drones. They need all of those things. But how can you stop people uh, with drones? What are you going to do? Shoot them down? You know, uh, you know, uh, like they do in uh, Iraq. And no, Iran, you can see them coming. You can see them coming. By the way, by the way, th th here's everybody ready for a big laugh. Do you remember the caravan, that big caravan yeah. that was coming yeah. to the United States <laughs> that never quite got here? Okay. 700 people. Wait a minute. 700. It started out at 5,000 uh, 5, 8, 8, 8, or something like that. When it got here, it had petered out to almost nothing. Then he said there was a second caravan. Now, do you remember the yeah. second caravan? When was yeah, that? Yeah. Uh, never saw it. Never saw it. And Ooh, now he says, he, oh, hey, uh, uh, looky, looky. It's like, you know, uh, chicken licking. The sky is falling in. Another, another caravan is coming now. We've got to be ready to protect against that. But we haven't seen the other two. You well, don't understand. Understand. They're using would, those shots from uh, Caracas, Venezuela as, as the film. They yeah. would dodge caravans. By the oh, way, there you go. Oh, by, by the way, the only the only the minivan invasion. The, I have to to hand <laughs> it. To, look, you know, a stop clock is right uh, twice a day. Uh, he has taken, I think, a fairly decent stance on the Maduro situation down in Venezuela. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, 
and that and that country is where your uh, democratic socialism has has destroyed it in ten years. No, what it, for the no, last it's sixty not years. Democratic socialism. It is not democratic socialism, Phil. Oh, what is it? Communism? No, it is. It is. It is. Uh, it's Maduro. It's basically it's autocrats. It's an autocracy. It's been ten years that they destroyed. It's an autocracy, uh, Phil. It's an autocracy. They're eating zoo animals. Phil, yeah, we know I that. I never talk about Denmark or Norway or Sweden, where they have great results from democratic socialism. Yeah, they Thank got you. about four people, and it's so cold there that they wouldn't uh, go out. Yeah, and yeah do that's your excuse. Illegal. Well, there are about four people in Venezuela, too. Okay? The point is, he's absolutely right. There's democratic socialism all over the world that works just fine. What's going on in Venezuela never was democratic. All right? Far from until it. They, until they run out of the workers' money. Far from it. Uh, let's see here. Who's who's calling now? I don't know if we have room for anybody else. Oh, I call Alex. I'm going to go check on my mom. Oh, okay. Go check on your mom, Tony. Thanks for calling. Good night. Uh, yeah. who's, who, who is calling us right now? Who's this? Hey, this is Jack Bishop. I couldn't Skype you because uh, there's something wrong with my personal Skype. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I heard you guys talking about the wall again. There were photos out of uh, South Texas today of the wall that's already there mm -hmm. and people on the other side of the border said hey no problem they got out their ladders and they went right over it all right what jack uh you look at juarez mex uh juarez and uh nogales and on the side of the border the u.s side of the border it's pretty peaceful but if you look at the Mexican side of the border, where there's a wall, they're killing each other. There's thousands All right, Phil, of let's, let's do, Phil, let's do something about that. There let's are, do something about that. Phil, Jack, Jack is Phil, we, Jack is All right, I'll, 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 let me back away. Phil, how big a military do we have? It's not the military that's down there. How big? The I, I, I ask the question. Answer the question and walk away. It's big. All right. Then let's go take What's over the damn country. Do? Let's go take over the damn country and police it. Well, look, look what they let's did. Let's be bolder last time. than we've ever. If that's a real problem to you, you should be for that. Well, As a it, former police fine, officer, Jack. you should be for that. It's fine on our side of the border. The problem is I on the Mexican side of the border, and it's the wall. It's the wall that keeps them out. Maybe it's the wall. Let's, 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 let's do something. Let's do something more dynamic. Hold, hold on a Let's second, Jack. Let's do something that shows what we're really made of. Uh, quit, 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 Jack, quit, quit Jack, pussy footing. Jack, calm huh? down. Calm down a second. We don't want you to have a cardiac. Yeah, no. a yeah uh, uh, hey, uh, but I wait, 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 wait. Get it over But Jack, maybe, maybe, maybe it's maybe like it's Phil. maybe it's the wall that's made things so bad on that side of the other <laughs> side of the border. No, what's really made things so bad? Yeah, has been the invasionary trade policies of the United States. You when it is cheaper, all our jobs down there? When it is cheaper, when it is cheaper for them to import corn into Central America than to grow it there, we got a real problem. I want to send guys like, like you down there with a sack full of American money to build businesses to counter the Chinese. We need to grow our own low-wage, low-export country to help us. You know what What's Mexico the dynamic? pays their workers? They, we can, we can, we can, we can, we can, we can, pay, we can pay them 20 and still be ahead of the game in comparison to the kind of money we're talking about. Yeah, but you what don't want to pay. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Jack. Why are you Jack, Jack, yeah. Jack, Jack, no, you're let, too cheap. You don't want to pay for your Chevrolet. You don't want to, you don't, you don't want it to cost anything. No, but I'm willing to pay for a Chevrolet that goes to Japan that was built in Mexico. But they what? don't take them. Because Japan let's figure. Let's a find a way to. Let, no, no. Let's pay the goddamn tariffs. Let's be more dynamic than we've ever been. Uh, you know, the Japanese were doing that in the sixties and seventies. Well, we that know worked, that. That worked in Venezuela too. Yeah. Look, so that's bullshit, and you know it's bullshit, and I know it's bullshit, and I will not let you get away with bullshit tonight. And let let oh, me. No, okay, okay, okay. Stop a second, all of you. Because Josh Wheeler hasn't said almost anything tonight. Do you have any? Do, do you have any uh, any any skin in this game, Josh? As far as the law goes, you mean? Yeah, I'm not in favor of one, and I 
certainly don't think that we should spend billions upon billions of dollars on one. I mean, I I see that as a waste of money. But is it you a know, waste of money? Is it is it a waste of money to have uh, say five point seven billion dollars go to uh, security, to border security? On items other than a wall, I would say it would be perfectly fine. But I don't know that I would spend billions of dollars just on a physical barrier. I mean, because I I do believe that that's not gonna. That's that not gonna. Sense. Stop the problem, and that's only if you can see that there is actually a problem. I mean, I don't know. As I sit here and talk to you guys, I, I guess I don't live in this fear that there's a Mexican lurking outside my door waiting to break in and you know rape and kill me. I mean, I you know I just I don't see it as that big of an issue. I mean, I have to be honest with you. I work with some of the most lazy stupid fucking white people I've ever met in my entire <laughs> life and get paid $100,000 a year and I tell right? them every day if it were up to me I'd replace you with a Mexican tomorrow because he'd outwork your ass for half the money so <laughs> fucking bring it to me <clears throat> too shame on a man I agree absolutely no, I, agree. Mean, I don't no, really see Mexicans it Mexicans are hard issue. working people mm. they're, they're very hard working people and I would rather have them come in uh, than not but I want to, uh, to v have them vet what is coming in and you know and also give a fair shake to people in other countries that have waited to get in rather than those that are going to storm our borders and and not uh, deal with the rule of law but, but the, nobody well, has when you, start looking, when you start looking at the numbers phil who's really storming our borders are europeans and canadians coming in through canada yeah. legitimately no not well, legitimately i don't have a problem with anything phil said there but I don't see how a wall accomplishes that goal. I, I mean, I you know, well, I mean, if you it, do, then you do. But I, I just, I'm sorry, but I don't. It, I saw hordes of people at, uh, through the night vision of the uh, border patrol, and there were hordes. 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 How over. many? How many, Phil? Hundreds a night. A night? Yeah. Hundreds. Well, just, Phil, just to see one that video. Cross. How do you know the hundred you saw one night weren't the hundred you saw the night before? Uh, well, they had numbers. They they took yeah, a number. Yeah, right. Came right, over. right. Phil, are you sort of familiar battery. with the preserving? What? what are you, are you familiar? Go ahead. Yes, no, Jack. no, you guys go ahead. Go go ahead, Jack. Are you familiar with the Bracero program that we had in this country from the nineteen forties yes. to the mid? All right. That is that is another solution. We but we don't want to talk about that because that makes sense. Well, how come when Bush wanted uh, work worker visas uh, for you know for guest workers, uh, it was voted down? Because there were a bunch of dumbass sons of bitches in Congress. Right. Like we got a bunch of like we got a bunch of dumbass son of a bitches on the right in Congress right they now. They just don't want to give Trump the wall because Trump wants it. If it was anybody hey. else, if it was Obama or Bush or anybody, they would have hey, given look, them the money for the wall. Here, here, here I'll, I'll drive you. I'll drive. I'll drive you all. I'll, 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 you pick your I'll, team. You play the cards that you dealt. You get up every day. You say there's going to be winners and losers. But we're going to fight the next day about some damn thing. Let's get to it. Here, I'm going to drive Phil crazy. Ocasio Cortez for president. <laughs> Good thing she's too young. Twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty. Yeah, she's too young to be president. But boy, I like her. Oh, do so I like, like her? Oh, I the world's coming to an end in twelve day. years. How could you listen to her voice? Oh, I think you're you, the oh, one. Hey, you're the one I can that listen. Like, I can. I, uh, it's like it's like it's like mana from heaven. I, uh, oh. you know, I am a hopeful that this country is in the hands of people like her, and she that she's like there Betty now. Boop. You know well, something? You know, if you want to shoot the messenger, why don't, why don't you listen dry. to the messenger, Phil? And maybe you won't want to shoot well, her. If you wish to listen to the messenger, you'd listen what's to her, Trump. What's her message? Uh, the message is that the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't do something about global warming. Well, I think, and, I think she's got uh, a good she, point. Yeah, and she and uh, and she, you know, she's just using fear. You're the and one she, that doesn't she like wants fear. To suck the rich bastards well, dry. No, yes. she's she's yeah, you, we should. She's using the persona of a gutsy, smart her. woman. She you know? she will spend and spend and spend and with uh, you know just to kill the oh, economy. You, you don't have that argument anymore, Phil. Nope. 
Nope. You don't have that argument. No, you don't have that argument anymore because uh, because you because you because you got a drunken you got a you got a drunken sailor who deficit go up. You got a drunken sailor in office who who a drunken sailor in office who was a lousy businessman who just blew through money and went bankrupt every other day. Uh, and Trump and, has and, never made a case for what the wall, how the wall was going to work. Right. He's well, never been able to show how the wall would keep right people well, out. You, got, you put up a wall. That. It's easy. You put up a wall. On one side, there's Mexicans. On the other side, there's uh, there's no Mexicans. It's, and it's nobody very ever climbed That's how it over works. a wall. And there's what? no tunnels. Well, yeah. it, no, wait a minute. You got to remember, it was a wall. Then it was slats. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's what? It's it's just a fence. It, no, it's Venetian blinds. And, and no, it, it's, <laughs> it, as Nancy Pelosi said, it's going to be a beaded curtain when he finally comes down. He's yeah, he's so caving in. San Francisco. He, since they the Democrats took over Congress, he's exactly. been caving like crazy. He doesn't know how to deal with this because Trump never caves. Trump never caves. All Give he needs is 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 a couple of these I, episodes. I want to drive him so crazy he him. takes a fucking gun to his mouth. Okay. Well, yeah, uh, just, uh, he's going to come back yeah. fighting. I'm just curious though, as as far as the the shutdown issue, that like two things. You know, number one is like why now? Because I guess I don't really understand if this is as, as important as it is. You know, and it's obviously important because the government is shut down basically over that issue. I mean, er everyone concedes that. But I don't understand. I mean, why could this not have been accomplished in the, his first two years in office when yeah. you know, he, he, he had all votes. The, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, 60 votes. He didn't have the 10. So he, what? He I mean, he couldn't get it done when he had all the, the power. I mean, I, I don't. No, he didn't, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Didn't, power, isn't God. this the guy that wrote a book called The Art of the Deal? <laughs> Uh, you, mean, you, mean, you mean put his name on? But yeah, well, but it, the book is called The Art of the Deal. Well, where's right. the art of the deal, Trump? Well, we, the deal's we not the... done. He was banking on the midterms, and it blew up on him. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So so you shut down, even if you believe that you're right, Phil, so you shut down the government now when you have far less mechanical power than you did in the first two years? Why wouldn't you have shut it, shut it down when you were two votes shy or three votes shy and use it as leverage to get two or three votes? Why wait until you need 10 or 12 in the Senate and dozens and dozens and dozens in the House to get it because done? Because he I mean, listened to a lot of people in a lot of crowds, and it got to his head, and he thought he was going to have a whole lot of steam going into midterms, and... He thought he was going to, you know, have this big wave and a bunch more votes, and he was just going to take it right on through. You remember, you remember, he, you remember how he spent a lot of our money using his airplane to go all around the country stumping. He was almost for forty-five straight days. He was in oh, some yeah. other city yeah. giving a speech. And, Obama and wait a minute, let me finish. No, he didn't do that much. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Just not, the quantity. Not even yeah. well, the quantity. Every time he takes that plane up, costs us money. Anyway, oh, what I'm saying, Phil, let me finish, Phil. Or... Phil, don't interrupt me when I'm talking, okay? Right. I just want to get one <laughs> thought across without having you stop it, okay? All right. Um, the point is, he went out and he stumped for all these people. And what did it get them? Mm. Nothing. Zippo. Zippo. More seats in the Senate. Zippo. The door. More seats in the Senate? A, hand, a couple of seats in the Senate. Not enough. The Congress is where the subpoena power is. That's what he needed more than he ever needed more senators. Yeah, well, one of his major goals is to put conservative judges uh, uh, in the appellate court as well as uh, on the Supreme Court. And he's doing a damn good job of it. Well, but you know what, Phil? We're finding out that it's not as important as you might think because even guys, even the two guys that uh, he put in there in the Supreme Court, Aren't aren't necessarily siding with them. So these guys, they get serious. They take the Constitution serious. They take their job serious, and they're not going to be Trump stumpers. Well, that's what he wants. He wants uh, a good uh, people that will uphold the Constitution. So he's actually saving and, and, and this Phil, country. Phil, 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 let me point out something to you. Conservative judges, they too shall pass. Right. May yeah, take a while. Maybe another thirty years. Hey, you guys have to wait 40 years. I don't mind waiting well, 50 wait as long as we get people wait. in there that are hard ball hitters wait from my perspective. Hold on, hey, hold hey, on hey, a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah. The fact is that you put a conservative on the Supreme Court today, 
30 years from now, he may not be conservative anymore. And and yeah, yeah. let's go to Josh on this because he's the expert on the Supreme Ryan, Court. Uh, One level, you, there are a lot of people. Am I right, uh, Josh, that a lot of times these people they put in that they thought were going to be conservative wound up going the other way or at least going to the middle? Well, sure. I mean, it, but it happens that way on both sides because I think a lot of people that end up in the judiciary are people who look at it more like I would. You know, it's not necessarily from a political perspective. I mean, there are a lot of things I'd like to see done that I think would be great, and I'm sure that the party that I support, you know, believes in, but I don't think that we have the power to just, you know, to just do it. I mean, sometimes you have to say things are okay even when you don't believe in them. I mean, you know, I've talked about that before. I mean, I'm, I'm not necessarily in favor of the death penalty, but, you know, if I were a, a judge on the United States Supreme Court, I'd have a hard time telling you that I think it's unconstitutional because I don't think it's unconstitutional. You know, because we had the death penalty at the time the Constitution was ratified, and uh, the people who wrote it didn't seem to have a problem with it. So, I mean, I'm just saying that's that's what I mean. A lot of times people end up being able to look past their, you know, perspective. Not everybody is an ultra-partisan in the way that we think they are. I think sometimes we don't give people in the you know judiciary enough credit. We've talked about that before. I mean, that's why I've said about Chief Justice Roberts. I mean, if you don't like everything he does, that that's fine. I I agree, but I think he's shown himself to be an honorable person. Yeah. You know, over yeah. over his time, and that's that's mostly what you're looking for. I mean, Trump's just not an honorable man. I mean, you know, I mean, Phil says he wants people who will look at and uphold the Constitution, and I I think that's the last thing in the world Donald Trump should yeah. be looking for because that's going to get him on a in a load of trouble if you ask me. Uh, you know, when the time finally comes for him to pay the piper. And, I mean, the only reason he's there is because that, that time hasn't come yet. But it's it's coming. The clock is ticking. Well, you know, there are patriots out there, uh, and we, we've had them since the Revolutionary War, that have put uh, uh, freedom uh, over uh, their own personal uh, desires. And maybe yeah, that's what Trump, Trump is. Yeah, yeah calling a patriot. But he's an ab. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Trump is an absolute patriot. Yes. What do you mean? He did. He. If, he if we, we have every reason, pro, we have uh, even every reason to believe that he colluded with the Russians. That's hardly patriotism. Hey, you know, in this country, you're innocent until proven guilty. Well, he Nobody will be. He will be. He, he will be proven guilty. Yeah. Well, well, we'll see. But, you, you know, this is supposition on your part. Yes, it is. And, and it's healthy, and, and, healthy and, supposition. And, and that's called bullshit. That's what it is. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I, I got a question to ask you that is a little off topic. In New York today, I understand yeah. that uh, they, uh, when it comes to abortion, that they said you can have bo uh, abortions up until term. Uh, you know, to the end of the term. I, don't, I didn't no, see I it. I believe the exception still was made for cases of rape and incest, though. Uh, no, no, no. It, it, it's, it, it became much more liberal, the, the ability to have an abortion in New York well, State. Well, regardless, I agree with that. Just, you know, I don't, I did I, not see I that. Too. Until you pull the baby out of the womb, it's not a life. So you, you're you're in favor of killing babies, is that? I is said that until you pull the baby out I'm, of the I'm womb. I'm in favor of retroactive. I agree with that notion, I'm, but you're putting... I'm in, words I'm in favor there. of retroactive abortion, Phil, and I would start with <laughs> Trump. Yeah. Okay. I'm a misanthropic person myself, Alex, as you by now are well aware. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I don't know of such a thing being done in New York City. No. Uh, I, what I happened? Heard, to, what I happened in New York? It. What happened in the state of New York? Governor Cuomo, in fact, codified the current abortion uh, legislation in that state. Which yeah. is Does that allow. Did that allow for uh, late-term uh, abortions up until uh, uh, just the day of delivery? Well, let's talk about that for a second, if you don't mind. That is such a rare occurrence, I don't see why we even talk about it. Well, because now it's law in, uh, in New York. Uh, like I said, that is such a rare occurrence. It is not law in New York. It is not law in New York. What, what did they What did they say today that uh, Cuomo? No, actually, it, ha it happened yesterday because oh, he was yesterday. sleeping. It It happened yesterday, and but basically, what it did, it enshrined the existing state laws in New York. There was one other law that uh, that uh, Cuomo also did. Do you remember what that one was? Yesterday, was it about abortion? 
No. Uh, no, I was only interested in the abortion uh, situation oh. because that's the uh, that's the great American current football. Okay, so you're you're good with killing babies, but you, uh, but it's okay. It's not good to to keep uh, our. Have borders, you ever have you uh, ever been in a movie theater uh, when they start uh, crying? Uh, have you ever been in a movie about, theater when they start about, crying? Uh, wait, wait, Jack, J uh, Alex, is trying to say something. Well, it doesn't matter. I say something you and nobody stops. Ever been in a movie stops. theater? You yeah. said. Yeah. What? Okay. So the, the Republican position is we're, we don't want to kill babies, but when they're born, we don't want to take care of them. No health care uh, for mothers, unwed mothers, people who need help with babies. We don't have any money for that either. So they want to keep them around, but then they, they just fuck them. Uh, that's your opinion. Well, that's what happens. They want them to that, work. That's what happens in that. Oh, Jesus. So they want him to work. You don't think a mother should babies. stay home and raise that child, Phil? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, you know, and pay and all the money. Then well, aren't you, and aren't you willing, a, aren't you maybe. A husband and a wife. Maybe. Uh, uh, Phil. Bria's Phil, saying goodbye. Uh, you, uh, my, what, my first wife's sister first wife was a counselor at a women's clinic in Dallas. A, a clinic that was picketed for almost four years. And one of the things she told me that I found just so telling about the right to life bunch, she said this clinic was open six days a week. Now, they provided things other than pregnancy termination. And she said one of the things that she saw that was so hilarious is some of the very same women who were out there on the picket lines Monday through Friday would come in on Saturdays for their own abortion procedure. <laughs> Sounds like the church. You go to, you now, go to church on and Sunday. I'm, and and, I'm, and I'm, gl I'm, glad, I'm glad you said that. The one religious organization in this country that has been consistent with its view on the question of life and children and fetuses and all of that has been the Catholic Church. But remember this. A natural abortion, a miscarriage, that fetus does not receive first rights, is not named, Last it's rights. Just buried. Yeah. Now, I can't, think, I can't think of anybody that I know of or have ever met that is for abortion, even if they're for a woman's choice. But they say if we're going to have these things, let's make them safe and therapeutic. Or do we want to get back to what we used to do when, when I was a teenager and Alex was a teenager, where we put them in back alleys on kitchen tables? Now, if you want to vote for that, uh, you use I'm that all for you doing story it. That four, uh, two girls in New Jersey got aborted with a coat hanger, and now all of a sudden they're all unsafe. Two girls in New Jersey, Phil? That was a common way of getting rid of kids in those days. The back yeah, alley abortions were left to, to hey, people who hey, didn't know hey, what hey, they Phil, were doing. You met someone, you met someone whose mother induced her own abortion that way. Who, me? <laughs> no. Amy Manuel's mother mm -hmm. did that twice because at that time there was no way to legally get an abortion. Yeah. And the woman uh, was in a situation where she said, I can't raise yeah. two no, more no. kids. So add that to your two but cases in New Jersey. And, and have you heard of adoption? I mean, there are parents oh, uh, that are begging Phil, for kids. Phil, right. Phil, stop I'll with the bullshit. About adoption. We, we got a theme song going here. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And I know you, Phil, we'll pick this up. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Good night. Jack's got a show to do. He's going to do the intersection, which comes up next right after this. Uh, we got Jeff Stein there. Thank you so much, Jeff, for being with us. Josh? Uh, when you piped in tonight, beautiful stuff, great stuff. Uh, Charles Wallace, good, good job tonight, Charles. Same to you, Kevin. Everybody was participating tonight. <laughs> Phil, thank you. Uh, Brian Ludwig, and of course, uh, the lovely and attractive and the voice of Gabnet, Rob Alfano. Uh, everybody there, uh, why don't you uh, do the job of giving a big wave goodbye to the audience out there? And uh, I'll, uh, I'll do my wave from here. Okay, bye-bye, everybody. That's our uh, citizens panel for tonight. They really did a good job tonight. It was kind of hard for me to get in, though. 
I got to figure out why they can't hear me as well uh, so that I can have a salient conversation with everybody. Anyway, that's it for tonight, uh, folks. Uh, uh, the, the intersection is next with Jack Bishop and... Uh, uh, then tomorrow night at uh, 9.30, it's the exchange. We didn't have one tonight because uh, uh, there were some last-minute problems that uh, Damien had to attend to. And then I'll see you tomorrow night uh, at midnight. Uh, midnight. At 10 o'clock Eastern Time. <laughs> same time. Same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>